It's a vehicle designed to take passengers to extraordinary depths. The tour submersibles that you're going to be able to take a ride on historically have been quite shallow, 100, 150 feet. This is 1,000 feet. So this, this is a serious subdive. Called Substation Curacao, this five-person, $2 million deep-sea transporter is named for the Caribbean island it will operate from. The Curacao, as she's also known, is the latest vessel to emerge from Newtco, the legendary sub-design company headed by Dr. Phil Newton. This thing is now going out for its uh, first maiden dive, and, uh, and that's the big one. Newton's Vancouver workshop is full of submersibles that take scientists and submariners to some of the deepest, darkest places on Earth. The ones we build normally for great depth are for engineers, uh, for scientists. But here is an opportunity for a tourist to go down to a thousand feet. Um, that's pretty rare. It's taken two years to design and build Cura Sub. Today, they will test her and take her on her first dive. If she works, she could revolutionize who gets to go to the deep sea. First, she must prove she's ready. It's a high-stress day for everyone. When that water starts rising up the dome, as soon as it goes over top of your head, you think, whoa, here we go. Building an elevator to the abyss this large has never been done before. The company that bought it wants to take a wide variety of clients to the crushing depths. Everything's looking good. The idea? Everyone from scientists to tourists should be allowed to dive. Go back and then move forward. The chief pilot for Curacao is Jeff Heaton. The, the philosophy in, in manned submersibles is always about safety. The sub's design begins with its three-quarter inch thick steel hull. Basically, we're inside a steel tube. In the sub industry, we call this our pressure hull. If the hull was any thinner, it would collapse below 2,000 feet. But that's a safety margin of double its maximum dive depth. Windows had to be as big as possible, but small enough to withstand the crushing forces of the deep. The main front dome, where the pilot sits, is made of two inch thick acrylic. If the pressure rating on the vehicle was any deeper, we wouldn't be able to do this with this window. We'd have to go to a smaller, thicker, stronger window. For life support, the sub required four large oxygen tanks. The intention for the sub is to have five passengers in here at any given time. And to keep it from filling with deadly levels of carbon dioxide gas, air scrubbers, similar to what's used on Navy subs, are used here to filter out CO2 the passengers will exhale. So uh, these are about 45 hours of life support per canister. Every system on board is designed to keep everyone alive at least three days, giving enough time for a rescue. So we pay incredibly detailed attention to everything, and we have backups for everything. I'm ready to do a uh, thruster test at this time. Over. Roger that. After a pre-dive check, Kira Sub is craned across a shipyard for her first sea trial. I'm expecting no problems, so we'll see. We'll see if I'm right. Even after years of planning, Okay, we're uh, beginning to lift now. No one, not even Phil, knows exactly how she'll behave in the water. The goal is to pinpoint the perfect weight at which the sub is neutrally buoyant, so it neither sinks nor floats. We dive the vehicle neutral, and then we use the vertical thrusters to move us up and down. A sub that's neutrally buoyant is easier to maneuver in the water. On the first dive, the weight and balance is less than perfect. The sub tips forward. Yeah, definitely too much weight in the bow. But by adding lead bars... He's just going to put a little bit more lead on the sub. To, uh, the team gets closer to a well-balanced, yeah. neutrally buoyant sub. Yeah, well, we're pretty close. Kira sub was actually built to float more than sink, thanks to a thick layer of special foam. This is not the, the styrofoam of styrofoam cups. What this is is glass microspheres, with each one containing a little bit of gas embedded in epoxy. If Phil's calculations are correct, we're going to uh, plunk you right back to the deck right now. There'll be room for extra payload. Yeah, okay, roger that. After a series of short, shallow dives, Phil knows he can relax. What a relief. Everything's working like a champion. The sub is even more buoyant than predicted, so an extra 500 pounds is added to achieve the perfect dive weight. So we're hundreds of pounds positive, which is exactly what we want. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Okay, and you can flood your aft tank when you're ready. 
Once neutral buoyancy is achieved, yeah, copy that. the sub's ballast tanks are filled with water to descend. And that would be blowing air into my tanks to force the water out. And purged to rise. To steer. So let's turn, full speed turn to start with. Six thrusters maneuver the vessel in any direction. I'm just going to try and do some, uh, uh, try and rotate here. Copy. Okay, all the, uh, all the spinny bits are spinning. Because the hull was already pressure tested in a tank to more than a thousand feet, Phil is now confident the vessel is ready for its deep sea mission. The thrusters work, all the communication systems work, life support works like a champion. Everything's all systems are going. All in all, it was a great it was a great day for us. We're, we're all really happy. Next stop, Curacao. The Kira Sub's new owner can't wait to see it in the Caribbean. So this is very exciting for me because it is a, uh, a means to get somewhere nobody else has ever gone. And while it will turn ordinary people into serious submariners, Phil Newton believes the future of undersea tourism could someday go even deeper. If we're going to a thousand feet. The Titanic is at 12,000 feet. There's a lot of room in between, but there's nothing to say that you couldn't take tours down to a wreck like the Titanic or the Bismarck or any of these famous wrecks. And what a tremendous rush that would be. 